Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Carolina-style whole hog barbecued pork. That's right, I'm going to show you how to do a whole hog barbecue without a six-foot-long barbecue pit, which you probably don't have, or a whole hog, which you definitely don't have. And while you probably could get those things if you really needed to, by using this experimental, miniaturized version, you really don't have to. And not only will I show you how to do this, as the video progresses, I will explain why you need to do this. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a cutting board full of pig parts. And while we're not using cuts from every part of the hog, we are using a very representative selection, including one rack of baby back ribs, b -b 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 baby back ribs, as well as one trim pork tenderloin, which I went ahead and cut in half. And that's something I did to all these pieces to make the assembly a little easier, except for the next cut, which was pork shoulder, which I cut butterfly style to keep it in one piece, although I'm not sure why. But did I mention this was an experiment? So I will tweak a few things next time, like just simply cutting that all the way through. And then besides that, I also had a piece of pork sirloin, as well as a beautifully fatty piece of pork belly. And after slicing both of those pieces in two, I did the same thing to my rack of ribs, since it just seemed like the right thing to do. Oh, and in case you're keeping score at home, this was about seven pounds or so of total pork meat. And the cooking times I'm gonna give you later are based on that weight. So if you go bigger or smaller, you might need to adjust. And that's it after my assortment of bony, fatty, and lean pieces were cut. I moved on to mix up a quick dry rub. And that included some kosher salt. Plus, and this is kind of key, some smoked salt, which you can definitely find online. And that's how we're going to get a little bit of that pit smoke flavor profile into this without going anywhere near hot coals. And if you can't find that, you could make up the difference with more regular salt and then just maybe rub the meat with a little bit of liquid smoke. But smoked salt is very cool and has other applications. So try to get that if you can. And then besides the salt, we'll also need some brown sugar as well as some smoked paprika or regular paprika. We'll also do some ground cumin, some freshly ground black pepper, and of course some cayenne. And then we'll finish up with some onion powder and some garlic powder. And we'll stir all this together with a spoon, at which point we'll take this and we'll use it to very generously coat our pork pieces on both sides. And while I do this, let me go ahead and explain why whole hog barbecue is so far superior. All right, if you've only had a pulled pork sandwich, made from a barbecued pork shoulder, even if it was perfectly done, you're still only getting the taste and texture from one cut. And don't get me wrong, it's a great cut and very delicious. But when you barbecue a whole hog and you combine the meats from all over the animal, right, fatty cuts, lean cuts, bony cuts, it is a completely and totally different experience altogether. All right, I thought they were exaggerating the first time I heard this. But it's true that every different part of the hog has a slightly different flavor and texture. And when you pull and shred that all together into one product, it is absolutely phenomenal and not to be missed. But anyway, I went ahead and seasoned those cuts on both sides, at which point I took a piece of foil and covered a sheet pan and laid down one half of my rack of ribs. And then I started to assemble what I called around the office Dr. Porkenstein's Monster. So I laid that down and topped it with my butterfly shoulder cut which is of course nice and fatty, which is why I topped that with our leanest cut, which was the pork tenderloin. And once that was down, I decided to top that with our fattiest cut, which would be our pork belly. And that was basically my strategy here, to sort of alternate our lean and fatty cuts with everything being sandwiched together and encased and protected by our ribs. I mean, come on, it works on a real animal. Why wouldn't it work here? And by the way, as long as you have a rack of ribs and some pork shoulder, I think you can kind of pick and choose any other cut you want. I mean, you are after all the log lady of this miniaturized whole hog baby. And speaking of Twin Peaks, make sure you give the meat case a couple looks since things like pork shanks and pork jowls would also have been perfect in this. But anyway, I finished up with my pork sirloin and the second half of my ribs. And after giving that a good press, I wrapped it up nice and tight. And not just as one piece of foil, but in four pieces of foil total which I will mercifully show in a time lapse. And in hindsight, I probably didn't need to wrap it as well as I did. Okay, the fat and juice is kind of leaked out regardless. And since we're gonna pull and shred the meat and put it back into that stuff anyway, it really didn't matter. But I did wanna make this into as tight and compact a pork package as possible. So as you can sort of see here, 
I wrapped this very, 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 very well before transferring it into a nice heavy Dutch oven. And that's it after getting that nestled down. I went ahead and popped on the lid, at which point I transferred that into the center of a 250 degree oven where I left it overnight to cook for nine hours, which by the way was a total guess. But anyway, it roasted for nine hours at 250, at which point I pulled it out and I let it sit and rest for about a half hour because I knew this was gonna stay hot for a long, long time and I had a few things to do. But then I did uncover it. And as I mentioned before, some of that juice and fat did leak out, but that's not a problem because we're not throwing that away. And at this point I started to unwrap it. But then I remembered the ridiculous amount of foil I used and decided to grab a knife and cut in instead. And when I tore that foil open, it smelled exactly like a barbecued whole hog, or at least from what I remember, since I believe the last time I smelled one of those was like 20 years ago. And after a quick snack of some very delicious rib meat, I decided to carefully dump all this meat into the accumulated juices below. And then I had one more task to do before I could start shredding and pulling this meat apart. And that would be, of course, to remove all the bones, which with this anatomy just meant those rib bones, which were very easy to find and pull out. And once I removed everything that wasn't meat or fat, I went ahead and started breaking this up with my fingers. Since as long as this is not too hot, those really are the best tools. Although if people are watching you have not been intimate with, you might want to use some tongs or a couple forks for a slightly less savage scene. And besides breaking all this meat up so we can eventually make a pulled pork sandwich, we are also at this point mixing those leaner cuts into those beautiful fatty cuts. And of course, during that low and slow roast, all those connective tissues from the ribs and the shoulder and the belly have sort of melted into this beautiful gelatinous liquid. And by the time all this awesomeness has been mixed and mashed together, we're gonna end up with something so succulent and so delicious and so much more flavorful than any other kind of pulled pork you've ever had. And yes, feel free to drain off some of that rendered fat if you want, but it kind of settles down to the bottom. So if you eat or serve from the top, I don't think it's gonna to be too much. And that's it, once pulled and or shredded, we are ready to eat, which I usually do after seasoning with a little bit extra of our rub. Although you should probably taste it first, since you might love it as is. But I did sprinkle a little bit on, and then I grabbed a fork and went in for a taste. And that, my friends, must be tasted to be believed. All right, pulled pork shoulders, fine. But it is nothing even remotely close to this. And that's for the very simple, already explained reason that here we're getting cuts from all over the animal that all taste different. And when you eat them together like this, you truly understand the magic that is the whole hog barbecue. And I know we really didn't barbecue it. But thanks to that smoke salt in our cooking method, this really is remarkably close. Especially if we pile it up on a bun and top it with some Eastern Carolina style barbecue sauce, which if you're not familiar is a vinegar and pepper sauce that when paired with this stuff is to die for. And yes, I did put on too much, meat and sauce. And by the time I had taken way too many pictures, the bottom of my bun was soggy, but I could not have cared less because that was one of the best things I've tasted for years. And in case you're wondering, I'm dripping sauce on that side of the bun, so it matches the drips on the other side of the bun for the pictures. That's as close to food styling as I get. Oh, and if you were gonna serve coleslaw with this, don't put it on top of the pork. Put it on the side, instead of, or along with these pickles. Or hey, trust me, you do not want anything interfering with that perfect pulled pork experience. Oh, and pro tip, if you ever do oversaturate the bottom of a bun, just simply flip everything over, since the top of the bun is almost always thicker and won't be as saturated. Oh yeah, that's right. You're getting a recipe and some life coaching. Oh, and I'll assume you've already seen it, but if you haven't, the last video we posted showed you how to make this sauce, which is hopefully almost exactly like the one Rodney Scott makes, who is the current king of Carolina-style whole hog barbecue and associated sauces. So thanks to him for inspiring all this, the sauce and the miniaturized whole hog. As you probably gathered by now, I absolutely loved everything about how this came out. Although I am wondering, do we need to pack everything together and wrap it up like a little miniature whole hog? Or could we have just put it all in that Dutch oven and roasted it slowly to get the same effect? All right, I guess there's only one way to find out. But the point is, if you want to taste something fairly close to a Carolina-style whole hog barbecue, 
without needing a barbecue or a whole hog. I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.